with millions of pies in existence and thousands being sold every day, there are bound to be some extras. So what do you do with them? You could install a minimal operating system or create a NAS drive, make a torrent server or even do some charitable distributive computing using Poink. What's up everybody? This is GTIH and you are watching The Extra Pie. For our first episode, we will be installing a lightweight and minimal Debian based operating system on our Extra Pie. Before we start to install minimal Debian OS onto our Raspberry Pi, we would need the following things. An SD card 1GB or more in size. An, inter an active internet connection and of course our Raspberry Pi. We would also optionally need a monitor. I am including some notes in the video description for you guys to see and refer. I'll open the, them up in my uh, desktop right now. So first we need to download the OS and for that we'll copy the following link and paste it on to our web browser now what we need to download is this third option which says Raspbian UA net install version 1.0.7 or whatever version is available at the time you guys are going to install it so we need the .zip file not the above two just the .zip and I already have the file so I'll cancel it I'll open the file so here we have the file and what we need to do is insert our SD card to the card reader and wait for it to load so now we can see it's uh, for me it's the H drive and we can close this and what we need to do is right click and uh, select extract files and then we will be selecting the boot option boot H our uh, H drive and we'll extract it over there it will take some time but not too long it's a very small file now we can go over to our boot H and we can see that everything has been properly copied now we don't need to use any software like a win32 disk manager or anything because this is not an IMG file it's more likely an operating system concised into a single .zip file so once this is done we can finally close everything and insert the SD card alright now as you guys can see I have inserted the SD card right there and now we can finally power up our Raspberry Pi and as you can see our Pi is on and uh, what we are getting here is that the operating system is uh, initializing our SD card and getting on with further installation of the OS now what it does is it's a very minimal uh, OS that we install on the SD card and it further um, receives packages over the internet and installs it for us making it a complete operating system with very minimal packages so that it doesn't take up too much of the space on the SD card now the good thing about this is that uh, we can use very small SD cards in it as small as uh, 1 GB and this also allows us to customize it as we want without in, without having packages that are completely useless to us so while it's installing the packages I'll pause the recording and I'll get back when it's done alright guys we are now back and as you can see the power LED is off but the Pi is actually on due to a recent bug this is happening on the Raspberry Pi 2 but it doesn't affect the performance so we can continue to use this now the system was installed and it restarted it would take about uh, 
15 to 30 minutes depending on uh, your internet connection now the default password the default username is root and the default password is raspbian r a s p b i a n and once you press enter you are logged in and running now we need to get the ip address of the machine so for this we are going to use ifconfig and as you can see this would be our IP address so it says 192.168.1.1 so this is my IP address right now and we can get back to Windows for uh, further installation and now we are back now what we need to do next is to change the current IP address and make it a static IP so that we can access this rem uh, access the Pi remotely whenever we want now for that we will need to have putty it's a ssh uh, it's an ssh client for windows and for that you need to go to www.putty.org and we can download Now once we run putty we need to add the IP address that we just uh, noted down from our Debian installation. And select yes it will uh, ask for our username which is root and our password which is R-A-S-P-B-I-A-N once we are in we need to again put ifconfig press enter we need to make note of the following uh, inet which would be our inet addr which would be our current ip address we, we need to note that so we'll keep it here we, this is our current Uh, IP address then broadcast which would uh, we need to then again replace it here and then our net mask which is the same now we need to check our uh, gateway address for where that we'll paste this command and we can see our gateway address right here which is 192.168.1.1 and then we will edit the network interfaces file uh, and then we need to install the uh, uh, nano text editor you can use vi but i prefer using nano it's much simpler for me to use that and then we edit our network interfaces file now uh, we need to remove the last line and replace it with this now as we can see here the IP address what we need to do is type what we actually need to use so I'll use 36 net mask will remain the same or uh, the uh, will remain the same from which from what we have noted earlier and network we need to change to 1.0 
that's what my network says it is and it will depend on uh, your router so you need to check that then broadcast will again we need to change from what we noted earlier and gateway then again from what we earlier noted so once that is done we can exit and reboot our system and of course we are rebooting it will kill the SSH so we won't be uh, any longer be able to access it from our PC right now then again we'll go back to the Raspberry Pi and as you can see we have booted into our Raspberry Pi so let's log in with root and rasp bin as our password and let's check on to what our IP is and if it has changed successfully now as you can see uh, it's showing our uh, IP as 192.168.1.36 which means it has been changed successfully and also this means that we can now log on to our Raspberry Pi using putty again with a static IP so we know surely what our IP is going to be instead of it changing every time we reboot or every time the router is reset so we'll put the IP that we changed so that would be 1.36 and that would lead us to being logged in to our Raspberry Pi as you can see we have successfully logged in to our Raspberry Pi now what I recommend doing is to change the root password by typing passwd space root and you can change it to whatever you like and once it's done you will be able to log in with your static IP and a new password so this was it for today's episode and in the next episode we would be creating a NAS drive out of our setup uh, we would be using an external hard drive this will work with Raspberry Pi B+, A+, and even with the Pi 2 it won't work with the older models for that you would need an external powered USB hub now thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.